All right, well, I'll try to make a lesson out of my atrocious day yesterday. This is my broken club um, from yesterday. I broke a, this club on the first hole, and I broke another club uh, higher up on the neck on the third hole. Um, I walked it in, but um, I wanted to show you the lead that I pulled out of this club so I can, I'm going to recycle it. It's actually not real lead, but it's um, a bismuth tin alloy. It's 75% of the weight or density of real lead. And real lead is what they use. But um, I wanted to show you here how these, um, how the anchors hold the lead in place. I call these little pegs, I call them anchors. And they crisscross. Now these broke off as I was trying to chisel away the wood, but they were intact. And um, they crisscross and cut and retain it in place. You also see these little mounds, these little bumps, and those also help to retain this uh, alloy, this bismuth tin alloy in place. I'll call it lead for the rest of the time. Now, because it's lighter than real lead, I need to make my groove a little bit bigger. So my lead groove is typically a little longer, more towards the toe, and usually I make it a little bit wider than than what it was by making the rear a little bit higher, just about it, maybe a sixteenth of an inch higher. Um, and you could see the anchor holes at the bottom of the groove here. And if we look closely, you could see those the thread marks in one of the anchor holes there. And that that's made with a screw or a tap, and uh, that helps also to retain the lead. You can also see the the grooves here on the floor and the grooves on the top and the roof of the lead groove. And those that helps to retain the lead. A lot of times, and here here's the corresponding bumps. But a lot of times, hickory golfers will be playing golf and they'll hear a rattling noise, kind of like the same rattling noise that you would have with a hickory golf club, uh, an iron. Uh, when you hit it on the ground, it makes this rattle, and that's usually because of a loose shaft within the hosel of the iron. But with with these uh, wooden clubs, especially with the ones with the scare joint, like this, this kind of joint, glue joint, uh, if you hear a, a rattling noise, it's probably the lead that has loosened. And if it has loosened, all you got to do is take a hammer to it and hammer it down, and that should take care of it for the vast majority of the time. But occasionally... Uh, you hammer it, or you can hit it with the back of an, an iron or something while you're on the golf course. And you do that, and the next shot, that sound is back again. That rattling is back again. So what does that mean? Well, it could mean that one of the anchors broke, or several of the anchors broke, and maybe it's only being tethered by one anchor or no anchors, and it's just kind of, kind of loose in there. You keep tapping it every time, and um, that's... Maybe what happened. So, way back when, in 1896, there was a book called Golf and Theory and Practice. It, uh, this is in my book. It's a little snippet. They said uh, a reference to a Remkin photograph will make the the plain make plain the possible reason. They're talking about why is the lead loose, and they were getting X-rays in 1896, which I think is amazing because the X-ray was invented by Wilhelm Rentgen at the end of 1895. So like six months later, they're out with x-ray machines, x-raying these things, probably playing around with them and radiating their fingers and getting cataracts and all sorts of nasty stuff. But uh, they almost use these like toys. And uh, I don't know if a, if a golf shop would have these or have an x-ray machine or, or would they just go to the, to the dentist or, or what? I, I don't know. But um, here they're trying to say, well, you can get an x-ray to look for loose anchors. And there, I don't know of any other way you would know for sure, except for the fact that if you keep hitting it with a hammer, the, the lead, and the lead, lead's probably loose for some reason. It's probably because these anchors are loose. And these are not screws. These are just the impressions left by a screw, and the molten lead is poured in there, and it gives the appearance of a screw. This is one of my first one putters that I made. I brought that to work. I'm a retired radiologist. And um, this is a club by Charlie Hunter at the James River Club Museum. And you can see the, the grooves in the lead. Here he's using, it looks like three anchor holes. Uh, but that just popped off completely and it probably got loose because they all the lead 
uh, uh, dislodged off of the anchor holes. So in Bob Gowan's book, The Oldest Clubs, he has this photo that shows um, mid-18th century, sorry, mid-19th century clubs that um, shows how the, how the lead was put in. Surprisingly, the anchors all point towards the weakest part of the club. That's what they did. This is an earlier club. This is how I thought that they should be made, and this is how I make them. I keep my my anchor away from the neck, but maybe maybe I'll try it this way. It's counterintuitive, but uh, anyway, that's so. If the club breaks, uh, uh, from my experience, a lot of times it's going to break along this back part of the lead, right, right back here, right back, right back here on this. Bolger Club is not there's not much lead, so that's not really a weak part of the wood. But on my club, that's what it did here. And then three of the five breaks that I have, this, the same thing happened. Here's a pear wood uh, spoon that I made. You can see the break uh, extending back towards the back of the lead there. And this was a Andrew Dixon replica, and it's probably hard to see the crack, but I repoxied it back together. It was a crack like this. And you can't really see the crack too well. Let's see if we could see that. There's part of it there. And there you, there you can see it in the light. And then it extends back. Uh, you can, it comes back towards that back part of the lead again. Um, so a relative weak point. And then the other two that broke. Uh, this was an Applewood, one of my earlier clubs. And it broke right in the middle of the neck. And I found a knot right where the crack was. And I didn't see that knot when I was attaching the uh, club to the shaft. You know, club goes by scare joints. So there was a knot somewhere like right here. So I've just put a dowel in that. And it's now a decorative or display club. And this is another club that broke yesterday. This one, unusual break. But it's made of Jatoba wood. And it broke right in the neck. Jatoba's a very hard wood. But I think it's probably a little brittle, and maybe that's why it broke. So, making a little learning lesson out of my disaster yesterday.